now this is a special kind of question in the sense um, they are even giving you the context switching time so what is context switching time is i told you so when a process is running we are going to stop it and then schedule the next process and in the and in between and in between many things will happen so when a process is running uh, you know in between the scheduler has to come it has to execute and then it has to uh, take the other one and then pick it up and then put it there i mean uh, see what i mean to say is when you are in ready queue there are many processes right and now in running we have to pick one one from one from here and we have to give it to there right so whenever any process finishes then the scheduler has to be invoked that uh, short term scheduler which is going to decide which process has to be chosen next once we have taken that uh, the next process that can be run, run for uh, scheduling but that can be run right now uh, the entire process the time is first you have to call the scheduler and scheduler will call the dispatcher and in fact these two are process they have to execute and dispatcher will change the context and finally the process will run <clears throat> once the process is over scheduler will be called and scheduler will call the dispatcher giving you the process and finally dispatcher will uh, make the process available for running so for this entire entire time uh, for this entire thing to happen some time is going to be wasted right so they are saying that the time wasted by the cpu in order to do that you know this entire procedure is one unit right generally they don't specify it in any gate questions but um, it is better if you are aware of it they don't ask it they didn't ask it but then um, you know and and one more thing in all the questions you need not do this since they have specifically specified that this is the condition i am doing it okay in all the questions you do the normal way which i have shown you in all the remaining questions which i'll show you also okay now see this if you watch the first one the arrival time of the first one is actually zero but then before you schedule it you have to call the scheduler and then the scheduler has to pick it up and then do the context switching and then you know run it so for that one unit of time is always wasted therefore before you actually run the process one unit of time is wasted right and now then uh, this p1 will be taken and p1 will execute for three units of time so what is three units one plus three is four got it and after this uh, p1 executes for uh, this three units of time then the next one gets scheduled but then you no know, there has to be again this entire uh, delay overhead right well, again that is one unit therefore five and after that the next process will be scheduled the next process is nothing but p2 which will run for two un two units see it is first come first serve that is why i'm doing this right and it will run for two units which means seven and after that again it has to we have to schedule the next one therefore overhead involved is one unit therefore eight and after that p3 will be scheduled p3 and p3 will run for one unit which means till nine and again there has to be overhead uh, so overhead is one unit which means 10 and again next one has to run so that is p4 so p4 has, will run for four units therefore it is 14 and again there will be overhead for one unit which means 15 and after that p5 has to run p5 is going to run for uh, five units so p5 is going to run for five units therefore it is 20 and again there will be a overhead and after this overhead delta again p6 has to run and that is where we are going to end it right p6 is going to, it is 21 right and p6 is going to run for two units therefore it is 23 right and you can stop it there this is the schedule right so the schedule total schedule is you start at zero and you have run till 23 therefore the total schedule length is 23 out of which what is useful time and what is the useless time useless time is nothing but the time spent for this overhead so if you look at the overheads 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 overheads are there therefore 6 by 23 is the inefficiency right if you multiply with 100 you will get in percentage this is the inefficiency then what is efficiency efficiency is remaining time right so how much is remaining mm, you can you can check it so it is 1 minus 6 by 23 is the efficiency if this is the inefficiency it is the efficiency right therefore this is the efficiency 
of this so efficiency is actually less the reason is we are having all these overheads got it so don't do this always which means unless they give it, give it that there is some overhead between uh, two switches uh, you know before scheduling a process there is a overhead otherwise don't do it right here they have specifically mentioned that before you, you schedule a process there has to be some overhead that is you have to call the short term scheduler short term scheduler will call the dispatcher and finally you can start it in case if that such thing is mentioned then only you know do like this and this is completely valid okay